Show with Declan Meehan. And a very good morning to you. Welcome to the programme. This is Declan Meehan with you on the morning show, Friday the 5th of March. Loads to get through this morning, including... First of all, let's go straight to the Minister for Justice, Helen McEntee. Can I turn to a subject that we've covered quite a lot here in the programme, and it's parental alienation. And it's after a breakup that... In a way, children are weaponized, and one parent is, uh, or partner even, is, is turning the children or setting their mind against the other partner. And a motion has been passed by Wicklow County Council, amongst others, on this issue. And we're wondering where parental alienation stands in law. At the moment, this is not something that I suppose is covered in law. It's not um, something that really not just in Ireland but across the globe has been recognised so I myself I've met with many parents and it's not just since I came into the Department of Justice but in my own constituency who have found themselves in this very situation and I I, I do believe it's a very real situation and that we need to address it Um, and it's because of that that I have asked my own department, we're doing a huge amount of work looking at the family law system, the structures how we can reform it, how we can make it work better for people but particularly with parental alienation, I've asked my department this year to carry out an extensive piece of research um, and we're going to look at four different areas. So firstly, we'll explore what other jurisdictions or what other countries are doing and what their approaches are. Uh, we're going to review the varying definitions and I know you know, definition, definition shouldn't mean anything, but is it defined as something else in another jurisdiction and how do we look at that? Uh, we're looking at other legislation in other countries and unfortunately this is not something that is legislated for um, at all really in other countries but there is some that we can work off and then we're going to do an assessment of how that's actually working so I really do want to make progress on this I I, I fully believe that this is an issue that we need to address and I think we need to have all of our facts we need to know how we can deal with this best what way legislation could work or do we need legislation? Is there another way that we can do it? And I hope to have that done um, this year and then obviously we can move further to to try and address it because it's very distressing for families um, going through these types of situations and and I've met a number of people in this situation and, and I really want to be able to work with them and to help them. Can it be linked in any way to the recent law under coercive control? And I know that's criminal where there's aspects of uh, parental alienation that's in the family law, but is there any way forward there? So it's not something that I would rule out. And and I think the the very example of of the introduction of course of control legislation um, is a really positive step in the right direction. This is not something that was acknowledged or recognized for years, but course of control, while it's not a physical type of abuse, it is a form of abuse. And to see the first conviction last year and then the sentencing this year was a very positive step in the right direction. So I wouldn't rule out that this is something that could be uh, introduced in a similar way. But again, I think we need to to explore, to understand, to, to, to fully grasp what it is that we need to do here and what is the best way of dealing with it. And I hope that the piece of work that's going to be done this year will enable us to do that. We've heard some harrowing stories um, from parents of both genders. It's not uh, just one usually, but uh, stories where children have not spoken to the other parent because their mind has been filled by uh, untruths and exaggerations and basically abuse, as some people call it. You know, when you think of the children who are growing up and they think and they even go to as far as maybe even hate the other partner because of the lies they've been told, I mean, we, we can't really allow that to continue. No, and I think the overall family justice system is something that we need to to grab hold of and to reform because, you know, it's not just situations where we have parental alienation, but there are very difficult scenarios where, you know, unfortunately marriages break up, where there are children involved, where something that can be resolved quite easily is not, it then ends up in the courts and then it becomes even more difficult. So at the moment, as well as looking at this particular issue of parental alienation, I've established a family oversight group, which is looking at the structures that are there. We have legislation that's been developed to look at the court system itself and to develop a new family court structure, but that focuses on you know, pre-court mediation, what type of ancillary supports are needed to support family members who are going through a really, really difficult 
period or a really, really difficult time, but also to acknowledge that when there are children involved, this becomes even more complex and you need to have the right structures, the right environment, the right type of support in place for everybody. And as you say, you know, particularly with parental alienation, it's not just men or women, you know, this happens um, with, with both genders. So we need to be able to look at all of these issues. So there's a huge body of work happening in my department to try and reform the family justice system really to make it more family friendly, to make it work for the people that we're trying to support. Because at the moment, a lot of the structures that are there, they're geared towards course, they're geared towards a more adversarial approach. And we know that that just, you know, it doesn't work for a lot of people and it makes it even more difficult. So there's a lot of work to do in this space. It's a very sensitive issue. It's a very difficult issue. But it's just, it's something that I feel absolutely we need to address and quickly. And while the larger structures changing of the, the, the family court structure and, and developing a new family court where you have judges who are very um, trained and, and understand these scenarios. You need to look beyond the courts as well. You need to look at these types of issues, parental alienation, how we can use media, mediation better, how we can make sure whether it's psychological support, whether it's support through TUSLA, whether it's community support, that they're also available for families as well. Mm. Though some of the criticism we've had from people involved in these situations is that judges in the court are, are not really up to speed with the nuances of parental alienation. They know they know the law, but maybe they don't know justice that well, and maybe this is a new thing that they need to probably find out uh, more information about and be able to act when they recognize it, because at the moment some are saying they don't recognize it. The fact that we don't have any clear legislation, the fact that this as a, 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 not a concept, but that as an abuse is not recognized is, I suppose, something that we need to, to rectify. But secondly, you've just touched on the fact that we have judges who perhaps are dealing with every different type of case from criminal and civil laws. And this is why we need to introduce specific family law courts. It means that the judges that are sitting in court, they are specialist judges, their only focus is family law. It means that they more than ever would have an opportunity to make sure that they are 100% up to speed with the legislation, how it is applied. And I think that in itself would be hugely beneficial and hugely helpful to families. Um, it's very challenging at the moment where you might have other cases that um, come before where you have a criminal case in the court that might come before uh, a family sitting or a family hearing and that's then put back. Uh, and we know that there are examples where hearings for decorations or, or, or these types of scenarios are constantly put back because there are other hearings that have to be heard that shouldn't be happening. These are difficult enough situations for people to be in. Um, we need to make sure that if somebody has a date for court, that they know that it's going to be addressed on that day. We know that the judge who's there is going to be fully up to speed and, and have full knowledge of family law and that is why we're introducing the family court bill that's why we're introducing these specific courts that's why our judges will be specialized in this particular area and obviously any new legislation or any new laws around parental alienation that may develop from the the expert work that's been done this year that's something that would feed into this new structure as well so there is a lot of work to do and i i accept that but I'm fully committed to, to doing it as quickly as possible. And we have a quite a significant team in my own department and working with all of the different agencies, all of the different interested parties to make sure that, that we have the, the best structure in place, but that it's informed by lived experience, that it's informed by families, that it's informed by people who are working in this space and can see the challenges that are there at the moment. And one thing on this is costs. Um, people say it takes up to 20,000, 20, would you believe, for a separation. And then the complications of maybe having to go further. Uh, is that going to be addressed in the new bill? Absolutely. So you often have a situation where something that could be resolved without even going to court is not resolved um, because there isn't the structure, there isn't the mediation type process in place. And it ends up going to court, it ends up going to a higher court. And that is where you see these significant fees. We need to remove that from and, and absolutely allow an individual or people the right to, to, to make their case and to go to court. But if there is a structure in place that prevents a situation from getting that far before it needs to, then I think you're going to not only save people a lot of time and a lot of heartache, 
but also a lot of money as well. So this is to, to try and make the process much better, more accessible and more affordable for people um, who, as you said, find themselves in a situation where these type of costs can escalate very quickly and where people simply can't afford um, to, to, to be put in that situation. Well, thank you very much indeed, Minister. I just want to say congratulations on your forthcoming event. And uh, uh, at the same time, I do hope you get some maternity leave as well uh, in that. I know that's an issue. But uh, you're very good to give us your time this morning. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Declan. Thank you. Have your say. Call the Morning Show hotline. 0818 303 103.